Hi, we're Tomorrowland, an invention studio focused on new hardware technology for big brands, agencies, and startups. We create prototypes and then turn them into market-ready, manufacturable products. On Potentially Genius, we take a Potentially Genius idea and turn it into a Potentially Genius thing using components from DigiKey's massive library. All while giving you a peek into our four-phase invention process. In this episode, we're meeting Raul Hernandez Arthur from Infineon. They're showing us the UTR-11 radar sensor. Welcome, Raul. I'm so excited to see what you brought us. Absolutely. So what we have here is basically a radar. The radar, in this case, the milliwave radar, uh, it's sending some electromagnetic waves that are bouncing off in, in the, the target, ourselves in this case, or whatever it's, that it's moving. Bounces back some, some of those, and it has an antenna that receives those signals. So it's a lot more sensitive, right? So with some of these radars, you're able to detect, as, as the name says, you know, milli millimeters, so really small uh, uh, movement. Right, so you have a curtain back there, and I could actually, you know, track things that are happening on the other side. So again, there's a little bit of uh, almost magic to it. Now, the other thing is that with the information that you're getting out of the radar, by using a microcontroller or a microprocessor, you're able to process that, and then you, you know the possibilities are almost endless, right? So you can do things like liquid level detection, you can do things like gestures, you can interpret the data. Uh, in a much more granular way than you're able to do with a PIR sensor. The way in which we interpret that information and the object we're trying to detect, that's what gets really interesting. Yes, a person is okay, but you know, can you do it with uh, with a pet? Can you do it with a you know a beer mug? Can you do it in an appliance? Can we do it with a car? You know, uh, you know, you can detect all different kinds of things that are moving all around us. Raul asked us to use this sensor and come up with an idea to highlight its unique features, including its large sensing range, fine accuracy, multi-object detection, all-weather functionality, and ability to sense through materials. We have three ideas for this. The first is a ball speed and distance measurement device for sports and games. The second is a range-responsive lighting system for outdoor nighttime activities. The third one, which we like best, is a window-mounted bird presence alarm that when triggered, takes photos. This idea shows off all the sensor's features and is a fun way to engage with nature. To prototype this device, we're ordering a battery and a Feather ESP32 V2. So I have the sensor right here, and you'll see that there's radio velocity and range. Um, I'm just moving my hand back and forth. Ginger, yeah. but where is the sensor relative to you right now when you're doing this? It's on my table. Um, okay. Yeah, I have it. Uh, Dorian gave me this like mount thing because otherwise it will think everything's moving if the device itself is moving. So it's mm -hmm. mounted to a table. And basically it's going to know like okay. if I'm moving my hand further away or if I'm putting it closer. Now, you know, for presence detection, our job kind of becomes easier because all we're looking for is if something passes a threshold. That's, you know, usually pretty reliable to, to code. One other test to add, I'll call it like a threshold test, just seeing how it can detect something that just enters its, its presence, but is there a drop off um, of detection? Even though it can detect at all of these distances, is there some like, um, yeah, envelope that it performs best in? Yeah, I'll do some of these um, tests and probably right. by the end of the week, and that will probably give us a clear picture of what we can and can't do. Before we start testing, could you tell me what you were thinking in terms of housing? Yeah, so I had a few ideas, uh, which I drew up here. We knew we wanted to stick it to a window, and we knew we wanted the sensor to trigger a smartphone camera whenever there's a bird in front of it, or, or really anything in front of it. Um, so one way to do that would be to attach it to the phone directly. We thought it could maybe communicate through the uh, power port on the phone. And there's some in-between options where we say stick it on the end using the charge port. Um, or the idea that I kind of liked the most was having it be a standalone sensor package. And what's cool about this is you can't really tell it's a camera. It 
is a sealed plastic housing. The radar is looking through the plastic window. And then you can set the phone up wherever you want at a different angle to take photos. So that's what I went with. I took these suction cups that you ordered for me and I built a housing around them. And here it is in SolidWorks. Yeah. Two suction cups, one on each side, stick it to the window. If you slide the lid off, you see the sensor package inside. This is the wing board. The radar sensor is right in the middle of this and will point out the window. And then we have our microcontroller and the battery underneath. We made an, uh, a nice little package out of this that just drops right in, screws down with a couple of screws, and we slide the lid on. And you have this USB-C accessible from the bottom. So while it's mounted on the window, you can still charge it from below. And it will wirelessly over Bluetooth trigger a phone camera that's set up elsewhere. So next I have to 3D print this and attach the suction cups and see if it actually sticks to a window. So before we actually try and capture a photo of a bird, we have to make sure our sensor can detect something bird-sized. So we grabbed an orange, which is kind of bird-sized and a lot denser, and we put it on a string mm -hmm. and just lowered it from a distance in front of the sensor. Yes. And Schwang actually had to lower the detection threshold to make that work, but we did get it uh, tuned so that it could detect something small and bird-sized. So I think we may be able to capture birds at a short distance yeah. now that it's set up. So now that we, you've made the housing, we've tested the electronic system. Let's talk about how it all comes together. Yeah, so this uh, electronics assembly fits nicely inside of here. So we have the battery, the microcontroller, and the radar sensor inside this housing. And the radar sensor is pointing out through this opaque wall of plastic. And it sees distance and motion and presence right through the plastic. And it's doing that all without any lens or um, anything that looks like an eye to an animal. Yeah, exactly. Um, so you just close it up it and on. stick it to the window like this. Um, That's great. And yeah. then this will connect to uh, the Bluetooth phone, uh, the camera function. And so we can position the camera here or to the side or even here in order to capture our bird. Yeah, and right. you can keep the camera inside and have the sensor and the bird be outside and keep your camera safe. So when this bird flies in, gets sensed by our device, a picture's taken. So the next step from here, I think, is to mount it to a window and test it. Yeah, we'll leave it alone for a day and see if we can capture any birds. Sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> Bro, it's great to see you. I know that we haven't spoken in, in months, but um, I, I have a little video of clips that actually reveals what the thing is, and I'd love to love to share it. Yeah, I'm excited. Now let's let's look into it. This is Bird Alert, based on Infineon's 60 gigahertz radar sensor. Here you can see how it mounts to the outside of a window. When an object enters its field of view, it uses Bluetooth to remotely trigger a phone camera, so we can see what kind of neat birds visit our office when we're not around. That's so cool. I mean, I can think of, of you know plenty of applications just with this exact same you know setup, right? So it's portable. You know, it's connected. You can just mount it anywhere. And uh, you can use the Bluetooth to trigger, in this case, you're doing a photo, but you can also trigger audio, you can trigger, you know, lighting, you can trigger a bunch of things just with this exact same setup. So I think you nailed the potentially genius thing. <laughs> well, thank you so much for bringing us this component. We've had so much fun with it. No, thank you guys. You really nailed it. I think uh, I was really excited. I was really curious as well, because I mean, I told you the first call, right? So. Motion sensors, yeah, again, we all have, you know, everywhere for lighting. And I was really curious to see what you were going to come up. And, and, and this idea definitely is out of the box. I have never, I have never heard it and I can definitely see the potential of it. So maybe I should get one of those for the office. <laughs> thank you so much for watching and thank you to our friends at DigiKey. Please be sure to visit the DigiKey YouTube channel to see our past episodes.